वेलकम टू फ्री लर्न यूनिवर्सिटी मेरा नाम राहुल लॉसन है इस वीडियो में बात करने वाले हैं इंडियन क्लासिकल लिटरेचर बी ई सी जो आपका एग्जाम होने वाला है फेब्रवरी में 2021 में उसको मद्देनजर रखते हुए हम लोग इस वीडियो में बात करने वाले हैं कालिदासा अभी जन शकुंतला ब्लॉक वन जो है उसमें से हम लोग यूनिट वन को कवर करेंगे जो कि इंडियन एथेटिक्स एंड इंट्रोडक्शन तो इसका आपको पी का ऑडियो में कन्वर्ट किया गया है आप इसको पूरा सुन लेंगे रिवाइज कर लेंगे तब आपको समझ में आ जाएगा इस चैप्टर के बारे में पूरी जानकारी मिल जाएगी नहीं तो फिर आप चाहें तो मैनुअल भी पढ़ाई कर सकते हैं ये बहुत सारे लोगों के लिए हेल्पफुल रहेगा हमने एक पोल डाला था अपने हमारे प्राइवेट ग्रुप में जहाँ पर बहुत लोगों ने कहा कि ऐसे बनाना चाहिए ताकि आपको कुछ नहीं करना पड़े आप सिर्फ ईयरफोन लगाएं और इसको अपने हिसाब से वन या टू स्पीड करके सुन सकें तो ये पी को ही कन्वर्ट किया गया है जो रोबोटिक्स वॉइस होते हैं उसमें तो इस वीडियो में जो हमारा यूनिट वन है जिसका नाम है यूनिट वन में इंडियन एथेटिक्स एंड इंट्रोडक्शन जिसका पेज नंबर फाइव अगर आपके पास किताब आए आया होगा तो आपको पता होगा तो इसमें जो आपका जो आप पढ़ेंगे वो है इन दिस यूनिट वी हैव लर्न अबाउट द हिस्ट्री एंड द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ इंडियन क्लासिकल ड्रामा इंडियन क्लासिकल ड्रामा के बारे में आप लोग हिस्ट्री और डेवलपमेंट के बारे में इस चैप्टर में पढ़ेंगे जो कि ये आपको वन जो जहाँ पर यूनिट जो दिख रहा है वो ऑलरेडी बताया गया कि इस चैप्टर में हमने क्या पढ़ा और बहुत सारी चीज़ें हैं जैसे आप कालिदासा संस्कृत लिटरेचर के बारे में बहुत सारे मेन जो इस चैप्टर में फोकस किया है वो संस्कृत लिटरेचर के बारे में जो ड्रामा है उसके बारे में संस्कृत का जो प्ले राइट है उसके बारे में बहुत ही अच्छे तरीके से बताया गया है तो आपका जो पहला चैप्टर है उसमें आपको ये पढ़ना है तो अभी हम लोग वॉइस को पाउस कर रहे हैं और डेस्कटॉप वॉइस आपको सुनाई देगा आप पूरा ऑडियो बुक सुन लीजिए एंड कोई भी सवाल होगा तो आप नीचे कमेंट सेक्शन कीजिए मैं आप कमेंट कर सकते हैं और बहुत सारे जितने भी इसमें टोटल इस बी ई वन जीरो वन में टोटल फोर यूनिट है और हर यूनिट में सॉरी फोर ब्लॉक हैं और हर ब्लॉक में टोटल चार चार चैप्टर्स हैं चार चार यूनिट है यानी कि आपको टोटल सिक्सटीन वीडियोस और आएंगे ये पहला वीडियो है तो यहाँ पर हम पॉज कर देते हैं हमारे स्क्रीन रिकॉर्डर को जो भी डेस्कटॉप ऑडियो है उसको प्ले करेंगे One point one zero questions. One, what do you think is the origin? Unit one, Indian aesthetics and introduction. Structure one point zero, objectives one point one, introduction one point two, Indian classical drama one point three, Sanskrit drama one point four, classical Sanskrit playwrights one point five, Bhasa one point six, Sudraka one point seven, Bhavbuti one point eight, Kalidasa one point nine. Let us sum up one point one zero questions. One point zero objectives. In this unit, we will look at drama. specifically classical indian drama and its origin role and significance beginning with its oral tradition to the later religious performances the unit will examine drama as a performative social activity aimed at particular audiences we will then discuss sanskrit dramas its various components and end with an overview of major sanskrit dramatists such as bhasa bhavbuti and sudraka This unit will conclude with a brief discussion on Kalidasa as the next unit will deal with him in detail. The objective of this unit is to offer a concise idea about Indian drama with a specific focus on Sanskrit plays as I am sure most of us do not have much knowledge about Sanskrit drama per se. 1.1 Introduction Like any literary genre Drama has its own history both in terms of its origin and evolution. The drama that we see or study in classrooms today did not begin as such. As a literary composition, drama usually tells us a story, but not just story, but not just through words in the form of dialogues, but also through gestures, movements, and facial expressions of the characters, dances, costumes, background landscape music stage setting etc drama is therefore a perform performative art that includes many components and participants such as the playwright actors director audience costume designer makeup artists etc in the next section we shall take a look at what is called indian classical drama 1.2 indian classical drama All major civilizations had their own version of drama such as the Greek, the Chinese and the Indians. One of the major problems in determining an origin date for literary traditions such as drama is that we cannot pinpoint the exact year of its genesis rather 
we can trace its influence and evolution to arrive. 6. Kalidada, Abhijnana Shakuntala at a more or less realistic understanding of the origins of drama. The Indian dramatic tradition was influenced by the dramatic elements found in the Vedas, in dialogue hymns and Vedic rituals. Thus, it is in the Vedic era, 1500 to 1000 BCE, that we see dramatic elements that will come to define drama in the years to come and eventually usher in a genre known as Indian classical drama as we know it. Even the epics, such as the Mahabharata support the existence of performers or nata as early as 400 CE. However, the most extant treatise on Indian drama is the Natyashastra by Bhartamuni, which emerged in 3rd CE. Bharata ascribes a divine origin to the dramatic tradition, which highlights its Vedic religious beginnings. The very existence of such a text suggests that it was the culmination of a fairly long process of dramatic development taking place at that time. The Greek invasion of the Indian subcontinent has led a few critics such as Weber to assert a Greek influence on Indian drama. There are certainly some similarities such as the plot being mainly centered on historical, mythical figures but the Indian tradition has the added element of supernatural figures such as gods and goddesses that populate the world of drama. The division of the play into acts and scenes, use of the chorus, developments of stock characters demonstrate this Greek influence on all drama. However, major differences also exist between the two traditions, specifically the absence of tragedy in the Indian dramatic tradition. Greek drama's adherence to the three unities of time, place and action is not strictly observed in Indian drama where the action shifts from earthly spaces to heavenly ones, taking place across many years as well. Furthermore, dance and song are an important part of Indian drama and not found in the Greek counterpart. Other scholars highlight the influence of Buddhist and Jain traditions in the formalizing of the Indian dramatic tradition. Thus, we can conclude that there might have been a strain of the Greek influence along with influences from other literary traditions and cultures such as the Buddhist and Jain traditions that worked together with ancient Vedic ones to create the classical Indian drama as we know it today. This may be particularly true of the Tamil epic Silapatikaram which is influenced also by the Buddhist and Jain traditions as we shall see in the fourth block. In the next section, we shall look at Sanskrit drama. 1.3 Sanskrit drama In this section, we shall examine Sanskrit drama in a more detailed manner. A vast country like India cannot have a singular dramatic tradition, given as we discussed before the various influences on the genre as well as the diversity of the subcontinent and how these communities received and adapted drama. However, one of the most prominent dramatic traditions to have emerged is Sanskrit drama. Others include the dance drama of southern India as well the Sanskrit tradition of southern India such as the Kuryatam in Kerala. According to the Natyashastra, a dramatic work's purpose was to provide not just entertainment and pleasure but instruction, wealth, justice, and spiritual liberation. That's why Sanskrit drama does not have a tragic ending because in Hindu cosmology, death is not the end but a means to either achieve spiritual liberation from the cycle of life or be reborn till it is achieved. Moreover, the rasa or the aesthetic sentiment is an important aspect of Sanskrit drama. And 7. Can be best defined as the audience's refined emotional response evoked by the play. Rasa is broadly composed of Vibhava, Anubhava, Vyavijribhava, and Sthayibhava, which are the different types of emotional responses to a work of art. Alternatively Rasa can be explained as a blissful aesthetic experience achieved via drama, and is seen as Sanskrit drama's highest purpose. Natyashastra also elucidates the different types of plays, the major type, Rupaka, or the minor type, Uparupaka. Rupaka consists of ten varieties out of which the Nataka, are plays based on myths and heroic tales, and the Prakarna, 
are place based on fictitious stories and where less important characters are dominant. Sanskrit drama's idealized plot structure consists of five transitions that lead to a final culmination of the events depicted. The first is the origin, Mukha, which states the seeds or the beginning of the plot. The second is the incident, Pratimukha, which develops the plot line further by showing both good and bad events. The third is Germ, Gerba, where good actions events seem to lead towards the aim. Fala. The fourth is Crisis, Vimarsa, where bad actions events seem to outweigh the good and strays away from the aim. The fifth is Completion, Nirvana, that brings together all the different narratives in the play to a definitive conclusion. One of the unique aspects of Sanskrit drama is its bilingual nature. The protagonists who belonged to the upper castes such as Brahmans and Kshatriyas spoke in Sanskrit whereas characters from other sections of society such as soldiers, servants, women and children etc. spoke in the various Prakrit languages. The stock characters encountered here such as the Sukradhar, director, the Nayak, hero, the Nauki, heroine, and the Viduska, jester, speak either in Sanskrit or Prakrit depending on their caste, class, gender, and age. Such a linguistic construction of the play restricted the variety of people who could watch and enjoy it. Thus, the audience was mostly limited to a refined circle of upper castes such as the royalty, aristocrats, Brahmans and Kshatriyas, leading to royal patronages. Even the Natyashastra states that the ideal spectators should be educated and noble men. All four castes could watch a play as long as they were seated separately. It is no surprise then that Sanskrit drama failed to be a people's drama such as those in ancient Greece and medieval England. However, this is not to say no other form of drama existed or evolved in India outside of the Sanskritic tradition. Folk theatre and street plays, New Karnatak, abound even now and are a testament to the vitality of contemporary Indian theatre. Another aspect that differentiates Sanskrit drama from its European counterpart is the composition of actors. Unlike the ban on female actors in European classical drama, the Sanskritic tradition did not have such prohibitions that required male actors to perform the role of female leads and drama could be performed by men alone, women alone or a mix of both, depending on the plot. Despite its many unique characteristics, the major drawback of Sanskrit drama was its linguistic barrier as well as the strict adherence to the rules of dramaturgy that did not leave much space for individual imagination and experiments with the genre. Its failure to transition into popular art because of the decline of Sanskrit as a living language led to the gradual disinterest in Sanskritic works. However, Sanskrit plays are still being written and performed in India by playwrights such as Manmohan Acharya, Arjuna Pratijna, Shrita Kamlam, Padapalavam, Divya Jayadevam, Pingala, Rjo, Stita Prajna, Tantra Mahaskatiya, Purva Sakunthalam, Uktara. Indian Aesthetics, An Introduction 8. Kalidada, Abhijnana Shakuntala Sakuntalam and Ravana, Vidyadar Shastri, Purnanandam, Kalidainyam and Durbalabalam, and Prafula Kumar Mishra, Chitrangada and Karuna, that are a living testimony to the endurance of the genre. Sanskrit literature may have failed to become popular literature but it is still studied in academia and seen as an important aspect of Indian culture and tradition. Let us look at the classical Sanskrit dramatists of ancient times next. 1.4 Classical Sanskrit Playwrights Sanskrit drama is defined by the works of dramatists such as Sudraka, Basa, Bhavguti, Harsha, and Kalidasa to name a few. They have survived through thousands of years because of their literary prowess in depicting characters, settings, plots in their own individualistic way. Almost all the great Sanskrit playwrights benefited from royal patronage or were part of royal households or even of kings. Let us begin by talking about Bhasa first. 
1.5 Bhasa. Bhasa, 3rd to 4th CE, was a Sanskrit playwright, preceding Kalidasa, believed to have lived in the city of Ujjain, relatively unknown to Sanskrit scholars except through references in other dramatic works. Bhasa's works saw the light of the day in 1909 when the play Swapna Vaswadatta, Vision of Vaswadatta, was discovered by Pandit Anandalwar of the Archaeological Survey of Mysore. In 1913 a total of 13 plays were discovered in an old library in Thiruvananthapuram, Trivandrum, by T. Ganpati Shastri. Bhasa drew his inspiration from epics such as the Mahabharata, the Ramayana, the Purana and semi-historical legends and figures. Bhasa's plays do not follow the Natyashastra very strictly, even breaking dramatic conventions. This has led some critics to conclude that Bhasa's plays were written before Bhartam Nuni's treatise. Others see this as an indication of Bhasa's poetic experiments and disregard for dramatic conventions. Swapnavaswadatta is his most famous play that depicts the story of King Udyana, who must choose between marrying for love his beloved Vaswadatta or the daughter of a neighboring king, Princess Padmavati, for political gain. In the play Bhasa combines romance with political intrigue creating a new kind of drama. Along with traditional dramas, Bhasa also wrote short plays, one-act plays, and monologues. Among the many dramatic conventions that Bhasa broke was depicting a tragic ending in his plays. Both Urubanga, Breaking of the Thighs, and Karnabhara, Karna's Task, which deal with the stories of Duryodhan and Karna respectively, end on tragic notes. The heroes of these two plays are traditionally seen as villains or anti-heroes in the Mahabharata however, Bhasa treats them with sympathy and shows a side of their character hitherto not dealt with in the epic. Furthermore, Bhasa does not shy away from showing violent acts on stage, which was another Natyashastra convention that he disregards. We shall take a quick look at Sudraka next. 1.6 Sudraka Sudraka, literally translated as the little servant, was a poet king who lived in Ujjan in the second CE. He is well known for his Prakarna play. 9. Mrich Chakika, The Little Clay Cart, which is an extended version of Bhasa's incomplete play Charudaktam, Charudakta. The ten-act play tells the love story of a Brahman merchant, Charudakta and a courtesan Vasanta Sena, whose union is thwarted by a jealous suitor. Even with a few serious elements, the play ends happily and is primarily seen as a mix of romance and humor. It also offers an interesting and realistic picture of urban society and the complex social structure of that time. We will be studying Sudraka's Mrichatika in Block 3 of this course. His other plays include Vinvaswadatta and Abhana, short one-act monologue, and Padma Prabhritaka. Incidentally, the 1984 Hindi movie Utsav, directed by Girish Karnad is believed to have been based largely on Mrijatika. Bhavguti will be examined in the subsequent section. 1.7 Bhavguti Bhavguti, a major dramatist of the later Sanskrit dramatic period, was the court poet of King Yashovarman of Kannauj, in North India in 8th CE. He too wrote plays based on the Ramayana, such as the Mahavir Charitha, Exploits of a Great Hero, which depicts the early life of Rama and Uttaram Charita, the latter history of Rama, which shows the final years of Rama's life as written in the Uttarakanda of the Ramayana. Both the plays consist of seven acts written in the Nataka style. His third drama, Malati Madhava, Malti and Madhava, is a Prakarna play centered on the love story of Malti, the daughter of a minister and Madhvya her beloved. Malti is said to be married off to Nandana in accordance with the king's wishes. The powerful suitor as well as a mix-up with another couple interrupts the union of Malti and Madhava, which is finally resolved with the aid of magic. The use of the supernatural makes this play a one-of-a-kind drama that skillfully combines romance with horror. Bhavguti's long poetic descriptions are seen as mere embellishment that does not add anything to the drama, but tends to obfuscate his clear and simple diction. 
He is known for completely doing away with the Viduska and thus eliminating the comic element in his plays. Critics see this as a reflection of his temperament that could not portray humor effectively. Bhavguti instead compensates for it by highlighting the supernatural and the grotesque, thus evoking the rasa bibhasta, disgust, and roidra, anger, in his works. His plays have the unique combination of heroism, romance and horror unrivaled in Sanskrit literature. The next section will deal with a brief look at Kalidasa as we place him in the tradition. 1.8 Kalidasa One of best known Sanskrit dramatists in the world, whose works have been adapted and translated into numerous languages and forms, Kalidasa's poetic skills are unparalleled even today. Basing his works on the Vedas, the Purana and the epics, Kalidasa reimagined and breathed new life into the plots that he took from these works. His works include notable plays, such as Malviknagnimitram, pertaining to Malvika and Agnimitra, and Vikramurvasyam, pertaining to Vikram and Urvashi. He also wrote epic poems such as Raghuvamse, Dynasty of Indian Aesthetics, an Introduction. 10. Kalidada, Abhijnana Shakuntala Raghu, and Kumar Sambhava, Birth of Kumara, or Subrahmanya, along with Kandakvyas, minor poems. However, his most popular and famous work remains the Abhijnana Shakuntalam, the recognition of Shakuntala. We will not discuss the details of his work and aesthetics here. This will be dealt with in the next unit. 1.9 Let US Sum UP In this unit, we have learned about the history and development of Indian classical drama. Special focus has been given to Sanskrit drama, with comparisons and differences drawn between the Indian and European dramatic tradition to give an overall awareness about drama. We have also been apprised of other important Sanskrit playwrights and that has helped us understand the tradition beyond Kalidasa and has offered us an appreciation on the diversity and range of classical Sanskrit literature. 1.10 Questions 1. What do you think is the origin of Indian classical drama? 2. What do you understand by the term Sanskrit drama? 3. Name some of the prominent classical Sanskrit playwrights and attempt a critical analysis of their works.
तो उम्मीद है आपको ये वीडियो पसंद आया होगा आपको समझ में आ गया होगा आपने क्या क्या पढ़ाई किया इस वीडियो में जो भी आपका लेक्चर था टोटल आपको जो नीचे तीन क्वेश्चन दिख रहे हैं वन पॉइंट टेंट में आपको ये जो तीन क्वेश्चन हैं ये तीनों क्वेश्चन आपको कंप्लीट कर लेने हैं और अगर इसी रिलेटेड आपको कुछ चाहिए गाइड या कुछ अगर आप चाहते हैं तो आप हमारे टेलीग्राम में ज्वाइन कर सकते हैं नीचे आपको टेलीग्राम का लिंक मिल जाएगा थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग